When it comes to cybersecurity for your company or your organization, you may take comfort in knowing that your IT department has that covered, but not so fast. Devel Bonnet, CEO of Access Smart, wrote the book, Making Passwords Secure, Fixing the Weakest Link in Cybersecurity. Welcome, Devel. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. So are you saying that it's not okay for CFOs, CTOs to feel secure thinking that IT's got all my security covered? It's not that you can't think that they're not doing the right job. It's that you need to understand it well enough to see how their security is impl being implemented that meets your company's requirements. Because a lot of times there's a disconnect between what IT thinks is needed and versus what the CEO and CFO thinks is needed. Two different languages. They're not speaking the same language. Exactly. Um, the CEOs are not geeks. They don't know all the terms and all the buzzwords that are used. And a lot of times the IT people are not familiar with some of the concerns with ROIs and, and uh, different aspects of the business side of things, profit loss statements. And that's where there has to be a connection that you want cybersecurity to be an integral part of your company mm -hmm. and not just a component that's in there. So what is the overall message of what you're trying to say in your book, making passwords secure, fixing the weakest link in cybersecurity? Well, so many pundits in the security world like to say that passwords are insecure or that we have to kill passwords or we're going to go passwordless. And that's just not true. You're not going to go and kill passwords. Passwords are a secure means of authentication. And when we talk about authentication, there are three what they call factors of authentication. Something you have, something you are, and something you know. Something you have is a card, a token. Something you are is your biometrics, fingerprint, eye, face. And the something you know is the secrets, the stuff that you have in your memory. And of all the three factors, mm -hmm. passwords are the only ones that are actually protected by the US Constitution and the Fifth Amendment because you cannot disclose information that's self-incriminating. So passwords are never going to go away. And at the same time, because there are these three factors and the more factors you have, the stronger is your authentication. You're not going to kill one of the factors and go back down to only two available. So this is why passwords are never going to go away. And they are secure. But when I talk to different people about, well, what's insecure about passwords? Oh, they're too long, or I have too many of them, or I have to type them in and I can't remember them. Those are not password problems. Those are password management problems. And this is where you have to get the employee out of the loop of being the password manager, where you oh. they have very strong passwords, but they don't know it. They don't type it. They don't generate it. You start using a lot of the other tools to manage that for them. So this is where you have to kind of understand, is it a password security problem or is it a password management? And all of them are really password management problems. Profound. That is very amazing. What, Deval, let's back up a little bit. What's at risk here when an employee says, you know what? I mean, I care, but I don't, I'm just going to make it my birthday. I'm just going to put in password. What are we risking for our business? Well, I mean, you can look at it from all different aspects, but what are they risking? Their jobs. Because if, the, if a company gets hacked and it typically costs over a million dollars in all the fees, fines, penalties, lawsuits, everything else that has to go on, a lot of the small companies can't afford it and they go bankrupt and they go out of business. So just by that, by the employees saying, oh, well, this doesn't really affect me. Well, yeah, it does. If you mm -hmm. have a password one, two, three, four, five, six, and a hacker gets in and then starts doing damage internal to the network because of your password, you just wrote yourself off as a job. Because you're probably taking customer trust away. And yeah. I mean, there's even big penalties for the CEOs and stuff, right? The owners. Right. And, and that's that's the next level. Um, so you have the employee that, yeah, they, they want to go ahead and secure passwords, but then the CEO and the company. Um, we read about how 30 to 40% of your customers will leave your company if there is a data breach and they're going to go to your competitors. So there's more money is spent on acquiring customers than it is on retaining customers. So all that money that you spent in acquiring those 30 to 40% of customers are all gone. That's a huge waste of money there. Right. Um, and then with the HIPAA and high tech laws and depending on what happens and how frequently it's happened, 
the laws are now even to where the CEO can go to jail for a period of time if there's been a data breach. Um, and you know, a data breach is said you know, is a million dollars at all. Then you also have the, the IT, the CISOs, um, I mean, they're at risk here. When you have uh, what happened with Target as an example, their CEO got fired you know, within a couple of days. Wow. And it wasn't anything he did wrong, right. but because there was a breach, he's mm -hmm. out of a job. He was responsible. You are really a brand leader when it comes to cybersecurity. Let, go ahead and share a story of something that where you really made a difference. Well, my first, when I first got into this, I had been in cybersecurity and security for a number of years prior to this incident, but I was working as a consultant for the smart card industry, and I got a call from a division of Motorola called Indala that does the physical access badges. You know, these are these ID badges you hold up to a door, it beeps and unlocks the door, and you get right. in. So they had a customer that they had a security breach a very serious one. And they wanted to see, is it possible to go and make that card also log you into the computer? And the group in Motorola didn't know how to do it. So they brought me in to kind of see if I could give them a, an hour's training on what to do. Well, <clears throat> halfway through, the vice president who actually hired me interrupts my presentations and, and just says, you're fired right there. During your presentation. Yeah, during my presentation, the, the CEO, or I'm sorry, during my presentation, the vice president who hired me stood up and just fired me there right on the spot. And, you know, I'm just kind of, my mouth is open. I'm sure it is going, well, what did I do? What did I say? What's wrong? And then he had a weird sense of humor. He starts laughing and he hands me a piece of paper and he says, this is your salary. You're now our director. And so I worked with their, with their engineers and their manufacturing people with their ID card to move coils around to do all the different things that were going to be required to make this happen. And we got it to work. We sold it to the customer. And the customer you might have heard of, it's a little startup company and software called Microsoft. Oh, my and, gosh. <laughs> and okay. the first order that they bought was for 60,000 of these cards. It was the largest order that Indala had ever received for a single customer wow. like this. Wow. And this is still going on. So if you ever go to a Microsoft center or to a store and you ask, is there any of the blue badges here? And somebody will probably have one. That's my invention. Wow, that is amazing. But the yeah. reason we did this wasn't just because, oh, wasn't it cool to do it? It's really about the whole convenience side. When security and cybersecurity is inconvenient, employees will always mm -hmm. find ways to work around. 100%. And they will circumvent security yes. for their own convenience. And then you also have IT or um, HR with all these different solutions and tokens and everything they have to go and manage. Well, why not leverage off of the existing installed base that you have, use what you already got and just repurpose it to do more. And don't do this rip and replace that so many other companies try to go and push with their solutions. That's not the way to wow. go because then it doesn't become economically feasible for a company to employ because, hey, they just spent $100,000 on one solution. What, you want to rip it out and put on another one? Right build on what you've got. It sounds like you've got solutions for cybersecurity that's answering every department's concern. Yes, and that's how we've looked at it. We we look at it from the four pillars of cybersecurity, as we call it. And this is where you, of course, have security and you have com uh, compliance. Well, those are given when you're dealing with cybersecurity. But then you start getting into the whole convenience side of things. And then you get into the whole economic side. And when you talk to the IT people, the employees, and the CEO, they all have the th same three concerns, but they're in different orders. Mm -hmm. For example, the CEO is worried about the cost, mm -hmm. then security, and then convenience. The CSO, he's worried about the security, the cost, and then the convenience. And the employee cares about the convenience, the security, mm -hmm. and the cost. Mm -hmm. So it's really matching who you're talking to. And we looked at it and said, well, why don't we address all of them for the right people to wow. what they're trying to accomplish? And that's what we did. It's amazing. And and I wrote the book, not so much that, um, 
I need, I, mean, I had to get the message out there, but it wasn't just written as, uh, oh, here's, here's some cool information. But it was all the questions that I keep getting over years where people just do not understand or have been given wrong information about cybersecurity and passwords. And this is where it's a book written for business people, for, for non-techies. There's a little tech in there that they've got to understand, but it's very kept at a very high level. And it's so that they can now start having intelligent conversations with their IT people and saying, okay, are we protected here? Are we protected there? How are you doing this? And now the IT people can come back and say, well, if we do this, the ROI is going to be here. So we have also answered some of the business questions for the IT people. We got to start wrapping up, but you talk about this being the virtual front door for every business. Yes. Can you explain more about so, that? Every business now today has two doors, two front doors. They have the physical door, the one that, you know, they get into the building and all. But this whole internet, the whole internet of things, the uh, World Wide Web, all of that, that's a front door to a whole new virtual world. Mm. So let's secure that virtual world, that virtual front door. Most IT people mm. will put security in behind the firewall. Mm -hmm. That's too late because once a person has passed the firewall, they're already in your network. So let's first of all, authenticate who's coming to your network before they even get there. Amazing. Devel Bonnet, CEO of Access Smart, wrote the book, Making Passwords Secure, Fixing the Weakest, Weakest Link in Cybersecurity. Thank you so much for being here. And if people want to get a hold of you, uh, more information is where? Um, we're on our website, which is www.access and then a hyphen smart.com. And I'm also on LinkedIn and other places there. Thank you, Devel. Have a great day. Thank you.